Hello and welcome to Alternative to Meds podcast. My name is Debbie Nelson and we are here with the brilliant Dr. Julia Britz. She's a naturopath who actually specializes in holistic care and holistic psychiatry. Uh, welcome, Dr. Britz. How are you? I'm good. I'm always excited to talk to you, Debbie. You know. <laughs> well, you know, I've been a fan of yours since forever just because there, anyone who gets involved in this work and has a history, I think those are the most effective healers because oh, they speak God. from a very personal place. And that's why I use you as an example frequently. So um, Dr. Britz started out with doing um, an amazing vlog that went viral and then did a TED talk, right? So you want to share with the audience, those who haven't heard about your work? Oh yeah. Yeah. So, you know, it's funny. I always think of like, and not that my patients are my enemies, but, <laughs> but I always say like, you know, that whole thing about keep your enemies closer. What I, I think that means to me is like, I was always afraid to really leave my total past of addiction and OCD. I always wanted a little bit close to me because I was always a little afraid it was going to come back, but then it turned out right. I love the work I do. Right. Um, so I started off like a lot of people with OCD do, which is in the self-diagnosis world of like, what's wrong with me? I'm going to research my way out of this. I'm going to logic my way out of this one and figure out why I'm quote unquote so broken. So I created a blog called my OCDdiary.com. And it was where I thought it was going to be really important where people could see my face, because at this point there wasn't a lot of stuff. I mean, mental health is still stigmatized. It was worse before. Um, and I want people to see a normal looking girl. I wanted people to see a normal looking person that had these things that you just didn't talk about. And so I talked about things that I tried. I tried all kinds of things, different herbs and different types of therapy. And I detailed that. So that way I could share with people what was working and not working, but end up helping to heal me too, because it's so empowering for people that understand like for people to say wow she gets me I get her and it was just a really cool experience to kind of share what that was like for me and see what other people were going through and that turned into me deciding to go into med school and, and I did a TED talk in the middle of that about my experience with OCD and how I got better through naturopathic medicine so I thought I'm gonna go to med school naturopathic medicine was what I wanted to do and I ended up really falling in love with, I've always loved chemistry, but I've always um, wanted to do mental health. And I decided I wanted to specifically work with people that were struggling with things that I struggled with because I understood. And that's, and that to me meant that I could see it in a slightly less clinical way, less sterile way, not to, you know, take away from people that don't have a history and they are still helpful to people. Absolutely. That's not what I'm saying, but just for me, it helped me connect. And I thought that was important for me to not be quote unquote, the doctor, you know, I wanted it to be a team thing approach. And so now I help people mostly come off psychiatric medication and work on solving their mental health issues without psych meds. That's, I know I, you've blown up, especially on social media. I see there's a big following that you have of people waiting for your videos and things that come out. Um, I think the world as a whole is before it was almost, people are fearful of the idea of something that's an alternative. It, it, what's the difference between like when we talk integrative, because a lot of times people don't understand what integrative really means. And it isn't an anti-medicine, but it's like this integrative approach. What does it mean to you? Like, how, how do you? Well, I would say it's, and there are a lot of terms, so it's confusing. And so um, it's naturopathic means we're using the foundational approaches of health, um, food, nutrition, supplements to supplement the diet um, and work on those, those first before we implement more hardcore therapies. Um, so more of what it sounds like the natural approach integrative means using the best of both worlds. So it means doing that while also using other therapies that are not necessarily quote unquote natural. So that could be pharmacology or it could be other types of drug therapies. Then you got functional medicine, um, which is open to people that have an ND degree or a background, um, in medicine. So it's people that are doctors or um, RNs, um, health coaches, if they want to get like a year long certification in functional medicine, they can. It's based off of what the naturopathic medical program is. So people always ask me like, oh, but are you trained in functional medicine? 
And it's because people don't know that yet, that you actually, you learn all that in natural like medical school and they just take the habits and put it into a program for people that want to implement it into their traditional medical practice. So that's what that is. Um, and then holistic is a broad term for some, anybody can really implement. It's more like a layman's term. Um, so any and all those fields can be really helpful for someone struggling. And so it's a case of finding which one is the most appropriate for you. But I think it's a good question because defining the terms is exactly where you need to start. Right. And I think that's, that's the whole thing that gets scary for people because they all automatically assume that, um, it's, it's an anti-medicine. And I, I often say to people, you know, it's kind of like the, the modern advances that we made with an antibiotic are, are amazing. We'd be dead. Many of us would have died from various things. However, it's just like an antibiotic. If we just keep taking it, never figure out what's causing the infection, pretty soon the antibiotic's not effective anyways. Right. Our, our body is not, you know, we're, we never really figured out. So really, this is like a movement about let's figure out what the root issues. What are some of the root issues that you discover by doing functional medicine testing that are contributing to mental health problems that you see in your in your clients? Oh, I love functional medicine testing. And and that really just means doing tests beyond the basic. So I don't and don't get me wrong, I love basic testing. I love, you know, blood chemistry and and I love, you know, all your CBC and TSH and all those things that you want to do to make sure things are working on a basic level. But in, in functional medicine or naturopathic medicine, we care about not just if somebody has a disease, we care if somebody's actually functioning at their highest ability. Um, you know, we don't want people just to, oh, good, you're not dying. Like we want more than that for people. So right. um, functional testing, that's where we can look at things that are way more interesting, like a more thorough look into sex hormones because low testosterone right now is a total epidemic. It truly is. Like I'm seeing low testosterone for not just men, but women too. Um, right. I haven't seen normal testosterone tests in two years. Oh, um, wow. So, You're kidding. No, I'm totally not kidding. It's amazing. So oh, it's it makes big... me want to go get tests. I mean, uh, yeah. <laughs> okay, yeah. I know. I know. Um, so we can get a more thorough look into that because it's not uncommon for a provider to run just one just one total testosterone test. And that's not going to help if I don't see all the other androgens with that, if I don't get a full picture. So that's a really good one. Um, and of course, other things that people want to know about mycotoxins or solvents and glyphosates or any other kind of uh, thing that's going to create a toxic burden or even a food sensitivity panel, all that can give us more information about how someone's actually doing besides just ruling out diseases. Yeah, I can tell a really great story that'll make you cringe because I used to own a mid-century modern store and I would refurbish the furniture. I'd get in there. I would literally have my hands, never with gloves, coated with all the chemicals. Refurbishing. No not only that, not wearing masks. I know, see? <laughs> not wearing a mask, sanding stuff down, I, the lead, the different things. But again, it was a world that I don't think most people associate those toxins with their mental health problems or health problems in general. They just assume, yeah, you know, I washed it off at the end of the day, not really thinking that it's absorbing right into my system. Right. Oh no. I know. Well, I still test high. Matter of fact, I'm going to go get tested again. And I'm going to do some more detox protocols that alternative to meds and vlog about it, about my journey of how to detox because molds, all of those things I was very exposed to. So, right. I love that about you. Um, what would you say is like your typical client that seeks you out? Because you've done now with COVID, COVID exploded. And uh, now all of a sudden we have a lot of people who are real familiar with doing Zoom, but how does that work with your clientele? Well, you know, it's funny, even before Zoom was super trendy or doing telemedicine was trendy, I always wanted to do that because when I had OCD, I didn't want to leave my house. I didn't want to sit in a waiting room and I didn't know when it was clean or what chemicals they used to clean it. Like I was never comfortable with that concept. It was fluorescent lighting. And so I always wanted to do um, telemedicine where someone could run to their kitchen and show me the bottle of what they were taking instead of going, oh, I can't remember that. I don't know. It just seemed to be, uh, it made more sense to me. Uh, also, I think for a lot of people, I mean, they're, I'm not the only one, I guess I'd say that a lot of people also just don't really want to go to a clinic. And most people that seek me out are either struggling to get off psychiatric medication, um, 
or have recently done so and are struggling with the withdrawal. I do get some people that are not on meds at all, but just don't want to go on medications. They want to figure out, okay, what's with the OCD? I can't get my eating disorder under control. Depression, anxiety are out of control. My sleep's really bad. The thyroid thing, my PMDD, whatever. So I get a lot of people that are really reluctant to go on a medication, which I appreciate because you should have a healthy fear of that. <laughs> so right. um, that's an, a big one for me as well. And I am trained in general medicine. So I do have a lot of family members of my patients that see me for things completely unrelated to mental health. But for the most part, um, it's mental health all day, every day. Well, the truth is, is that a naturopathic doctor that specializes like what you do, um, because there is a huge amount of education when it comes to these types of medications that people are taking. And if they did want to taper, um, that's always the caution I always tell people, precursor on any of our videos, never discontinue medications without advising your doctors and uh, finding someone to be able to assist you with this, um, because it is very serious. And I think most people don't realize how serious these medications are and will abruptly stop them and cause things, conditions like akathisia and other things that come up as a result, right? Right. So, um, you know, that's, we're, we wanna make sure that everyone knows we're not, we're not out of KV. So you specialize in being able to help people find those alternatives, preferably oftentimes before, or maybe they're off their meds, they're not doing so well, they don't want to go back onto medications. They've never sought this aspect of, of healing themselves, correct? Correct. And I think, you know, it's because for, for medicine, we treat mental health the way we would treat any other disease, which is really unfortunate because we actually use this disorder model, um, which I think is the biggest problem because the, the difference between a disorder and a disease is a disease has a cause like pneumonia, you know, Ooh. a disorder does not have a cause. So people are often told like, oh, you've got this anxiety disorder. You're inherently broken and we don't know why. Would you like a pharmaceutical? That's why the DSM is only full of pharmaceuticals as options for treatment. Nothing's curative, of course. Pharmaceuticals don't cure anything in that regard for a psychiatry. Um, so, and that's a problem because if people knew they had something like obsessive compulsive disease, they go, oh, well, what caused it? That's way more interesting. Like what right. caused it? Um, Cause there is something, there's absolutely something. And I've seen, for example, with OCD, I've seen everything out of the sun cause it. Um, you know, I've even seen something like low vitamin E, really low vitamin E had that cause it. Um, and even in my case, it was a parasite. So it's, and it's really sad because oftentimes, um, I understand because I was there. Like, I even remember in my natural the doctor's office, she said, oh, you know, we can do stuff for OCD. And I said, oh, no, 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 it's okay. It's okay. Because I had already been told so many times that there was nothing I could do besides therapy because there was no treatment, because there was no answer, because there was no cause. It was just this genetic, mysterious thing. And I think what people need to know is that you can't blame everything on genetics. They do. And that's a cop-out. Like they've never isolated a gene for OCD, not once. They found some genes that have to do with serotonin. Can't call that OCD though, you really can't. So it's, I didn't even know there was more that we could do. And she said, no, Julia, there's a lot we could do. So lo and behold- I think that's what I love about you. You have to understand, like I've been around Julia working in her, in her I'm absolutely, blown away with because your mind never stops thinking that is the difference that when you're working with someone with dr brits she literally says i'm not sure what's causing this and that is the difference between someone who symptomatically diagnoses you you have ac ocd and somebody who's actually saying what's at the root issue why is it that you can't stop what is causing the sleep problem what's causing the you know we all have contributing factors of stress obviously mm -hmm. But it's how we deal with, like, as our body equipped to do it. And when I've gone down this path myself and I started cleaning up my diet, you know, because I had significant weight issues. I, I was, I didn't, I was never in, or I was overweight because so I had significant weight issues. When I started cleaning up my diet and started associating how my diet affected my mood, it all of a sudden didn't become so difficult because I realized for me, it really was 
that mm-hmm. imperative, eliminating gluten, eliminating sugar, eliminating some of these things, I think the average person doesn't believe contributes to their mental health. And yet you find is enormously contributing to people's mental health problems. Oh, a hundred percent. Um, and I feel like a, a bit of a broken record and I'm sure you do too. Like when we talk about how diet affects mood and mental health, but we live in such a cover up culture, like, Oh, you don't like how your laundry smells add more fragrance to it. Oh, you don't like how your apartment smells? Plug in a Febreze. You don't like how that tastes? Like put more chemicals on it or more dry. We always want to just cover things up. And in reality, we are so full. We have such a toxic burden in America, like with the amount of chemicals and what we put on our face to what we consume in a day. The very least we can do is not eat horrendously awful food that we know that is going to bother our mental health. Right. There's no reason. I mean, yes, I get it. It's delicious. And recreational eating is important. You know, I love it. <laughs> I've never heard of that. Recreational. I love recreational eating. <laughs> I do too. That's great. We all love recreational eating. That's what I said. I said, never, if someone told me the rest of my life, I would never get a seized chocolate is not realistic. But what is realistic is that I now know when I do consume those things, it was not vanity. Of course it's vanity. I'm a woman. I want to look good. You know, most yeah. people do. Yeah. But the connection between food and mood, I never connected until I went on this journey myself. And it's yeah. it's it's a mind changing. And you're right. You walk around and see people like my family looks at me now and I see their laundry detergent. I'm oh my gosh, why are you using this laundry detergent? You have a Febreze in your wall? Do you realize this is a neurotoxin, right? <laughs> So I don't know. It's and bad. Can't... It's it's bad, but you know, it's not bad because I think a lot of people just don't even know that. So mm-hmm. for a lot of people, that is new information. Like, you know, I was a big smelly person myself. I had mm-hmm. perfumes and, you know, smelled the new downy that came in and all the fragrance stuff in my house and not never realizing those are all neurotoxins, including my, I love makeup. Now I use 100% pure, you know, I love, I, I just, there's, there's alternatives that are not going to cause you neurological problems and environmental issues. Let's see, and we're not even talking about what it does to our environment, right? That's true. I know, and the thing is, you just have to pick your poisons in a toxic world. Like, <laughs> you want to do. That's but, you know, true. Because for me, like it's, I've been off gluten for such a long time. It's, it's just not a big deal anymore. Like it used to be, it just took a long time, but it's really not a big deal anymore. Um, whereas other things I do care more about. So like, you know, for some people, it may be like, you know, if you want Botox and that's your thing, then do it. If like a right. pedicure is your thing, then do it. Um, but there's certain things that I can let go of, and we all have to decide for ourselves, you know, what right. it is that's really important. Right. So Dr. Britz, tell me about bioresonance and how it's applicable to mental health. I love bioresonance. I love it so much. So um, it's a little bit hard to explain. So I like to explain it more with narrative. So if you ever had like an EKG um, where they put those little leads on your, around your chest to get a sense of what your heart's doing and those electricity uh, is, you know, they use that to kind of create uh-huh. a picture and it looks like waves and they go, oh, this pattern indicates this pathology, right? Um, so we've been using electricity for a long time to get a sense of what's going on with the body just in a very minimal way. So Dr. Vo a long time ago said, Hey, why are we only looking at the heart doing EKG or the brain doing EEG? If we're fully electric, if we're fluid beings, if we're conducting electricity through the water that we are, why aren't we looking at our entire body? So he created this device, um, which we call bioresonance. And it sends 150,000 different electronic frequencies through DNA. So it's really amazing because we can get a comprehensive perspective of what's going on the body from the innate intelligence. So it's a little different than, let's say you wanted to run a lab for testosterone. Um, it's, that is a quantitative lab. You say, I want the number. I want to know how much hormone is in the serum at this moment in time. I want a number. So I can't do that with bioresonance because it sends electricity through the DNA. And when it reaches some sort of congestion or inflammation, that's the information that goes to my computer. So right. I can't really request anything. It just, what comes up, comes up. So I can get really good information about what's going on 
from what the body is going through in that moment. Um, like an example would be, I had a, I had a guy who, um, what was that? Maybe like three weeks ago, I think. Anyway, um, horrible GI stuff, which I mean, and GI can be anything. That's the problem. Like, I kind of feel bad for these GI doctors because they're like, uh, we'll just do colonoscopy, I guess. Because like, what else right. can you do? Um, because it could be anything. Um, so anyway, when we did bioresonance, uh, she's holding a lot of sexual guilt. Actually, it's really interesting. Um, which can hold in different parts of the body. But on a physical level, she had a pretty nasty tapeworm. So because we knew what was going on and symptomatically she confirmed what was, I was like, yeah, that's definitely a tapeworm. Um, so from there, I can take different nutraceuticals, like different herbs I would use or whatever to target treating that. Um, I can then put it with her DNA and make sure it works correctly electronically and see if her body would get better from that treatment. So it's a way to target treatment as well as I don't want to say diagnose because the FDA would never let me say that about this machine, <laughs> but I digress. Um, but that's sort of how it works. Yeah. Um, I actually got to experience that with you and it was unbelievably accurate. Um, a matter of fact, so much for, so it was like, um, because when I did that, um, it, picked up on my kidney damage, it picked up on my UTI issues, it picked up, uh, it picked up on body things, like as you went through it, and that you didn't know. Um, so I thought it was just an amazing uh, tool to be able to help assist, honestly, very quickly, surprisingly yeah. how quickly, like, you know, okay, this is what's going on, like down to a parasite, you know, I know. And it's really wild, because you know, I, I, and I love lab work. I love functional labs. Absolutely. Especially when we're trying to get a baseline and see how treatment's going. Right. That's all super helpful. But at the same time, it's also a little archaic because I'm like, I'm only getting one number and I can get hundreds of lines of data from bioresonance. I can get so much information at one time and put it all together. Because to me, that's what natural medicine really is. It's like, how do we get the body to function better? I can't do that with the pharmacology philosophy, which is, oh, we'll give you one pill to treat this one thing and everything will get better. No, you're going to pay for that at some point, like with either disrupting right. your microflora or whatever. Um, but the body's not just one thing that's off kilter. It's, it's like, there's usually a few things going on. So it's more like causation versus cause. Right. So we're trying to figure out how do we support all of that put it all back together. So I can't do that with a single supplement. I can't just like, I couldn't, you know, you can't totally do it with a pharmacological, um, which is why when people ask me like, what supplement's good for anxiety? There isn't one. There's not like, because if you were anxious and you said, which one's good for anxiety? And you took five HTP and you felt worse. Like, okay, well it's, it's cause you can't just pick one. In reality, what if you were anxious? Cause you had a B12 deficiency, then yeah. We just don't know. So, and maybe we can't just treat that person with just B12. Maybe we have to go, well, why is their B12 low? What's their stomach acid doing? Okay, what are they eating? Now it's a bigger conversation. And that's what naturopathic medicine is. It's a bigger conversation about your entire life. I, I think that's the part of you when I've seen, because I've known uh, numerous people that were your patients. And I think the beautiful thing was seeing the light bulb go off in them and the excitement they felt that you figured out. I always said, oh, she cracked your code. Oh, yeah. <laughs> because, um, honestly, I feel like we all have code. We all have our own code of what's going on. Your antidote is different than mine. And um, there was some, you know, horrific OCD and pacing and, yeah. and all of these issues. And, and I remember him saying, Dr. Britt's, cracked my code um all of a sudden overnight my thyroid was off and my hormones were off and when we leveled it out it was a matter of weeks not it was to go from an inconsolable person who could not get relief to being able to have a discussion with him and see him well and that's kind of why your story is so special um because you share it so openly. And I, I, you know, like you said, you can't take away from the doctors that haven't experienced it. Not all of them have. But it certainly adds to the validity when someone personally, like I said, if I'm gonna look for someone to help me 
um, with my weight loss journey, it's not to say coaches that don't know or someone that doesn't know, but when someone says to me, I weighed this much weight and I achieved this, the validity of that, because I know they understand. Yes. Mm -hmm. They understand. And that's where I think a big part of your practice is. So um, do you have any of your, who are your favorite? I always say, I want to lead it to the next person. Who are some of your favorite doctors and your favorite authors that you like or you follow? Because I'll go after them. I want to make this platform be incredibly strong with other healers, with other people who are doing work of any, you know, of this kind of help. Oh, I love that. I mean, you know, I love Dr. Sam Lee. I think he's yeah. amazing. The spiritual I love Dr. Sam Lee. Uh, all right. And then, um, I mean, Kelly Brogan, solid, especially if you want a more of a program to do at home versus a one-on-one. I think she's got a really cool um, perspective and she's constantly evolving as a person, which I think is really, really neat to see. Um, Joseph Yi, he's an integrative psychiatrist in, I forget where he lives, but it's on the East Coast somewhere. Mm -hmm. um, but he's he's really cool he's very uh i think he calls himself the street md and he's pretty <laughs> he's uh, like one of those guys that just has no doctor filter on you know so, <laughs> at all so he helps people um with detox and addiction that's and so okay. he's a, a pretty great i re, i refer to him all the time um james greenblatt is really cool he runs an eating disorder clinic on the east coast and he has a holistic perspective and uh, very knowledgeable especially about different medications and um, just a sweet kind of doctor guy he's cool um so yeah those are my favorites right now are there any books it's that you recommend to your people oh i i always recommend louise hayes you can heal your life because oh, i love that that's what started my whole healing journey oh really yeah, absolutely. I listened to it on Audible. I listened, uh, well, Audible wasn't back then, but I listened to the whole thing. That's what started it for me. Oh my goodness. Amazing. Um, yeah, I, I love, I love that book. I've read it a bunch. I've had patients tell me it was life-changing and it is. Um, right. And for those who don't know, she does a lot of, she did write a lot about positive thinking, which is really nothing to do with magical thinking, which is like, right. I can't wait to get the parking space. Like, you know, whatever. Um, it's more about speaking kindly to yourself. And most people that are tapering or going through any kind of psychiatric issue have lower self-esteem because it's hard not to like, what's wrong with right. me? Why haven't I figured this out? Why did I let my doctor, why didn't I ask him more questions? Um, and honestly, being on a med is a tough thing to do because like what messages does that med give you? Right? Like I'm right. a little broken. I can't, be me without this other thing like there's a lot that goes into that right. so um louise hayes whole approach was just about being kind to yourself and that was pretty cool and i also love um women who love too much by robin norwood and it's a really lovely book um geared more towards women but i know men like it too and it's um all about love addiction and codependency mm. and um i mean what is love if it's not a drug <laughs> <laughs> It is, isn't it? It's a really powerful one. Get those uh -huh. endorphins flying. Is there anything else that you think our audience needs to hear? What, what, what does it do? Like if they want to come and work with you, what does that look like? Um, right now, it's mostly telemed. I do operate in person as well in Las Vegas, but mostly telemed. Um, so I always do a discovery call to begin with to make sure that we're a good fit because I do know that things can get expensive, like supplements can get expensive and trying out different doctors and changing your mind. It's a lot. So I like to make sure that it's going to be like a hell yes for me and them right. going forward. Um, and so either it is, and I kind of lay out what that's going to look like, um, or it's not. And I try to give referrals of who I think would be a better choice. Um, okay. and then if we decide to work together. Um, we start with an initial consultation and then we figure out from there. And usually it's, it's about 75 minutes. And so I let them tell their story as long as they need to. And most people take a lot of that time. And that way we can figure out how we're going to basically get to the goal of where they want to be. Cause that's always a good question is what are your health goals? Like, what do you really want? What do you right. think is possible? Are you ready to do this? Do you want to do this? Do you believe you can get better? And that's the thing. If someone doesn't believe they can get better, probably not a good fit because right. it's okay. But like, 
and I was there too, but like, I I've had plenty of doctors tell me like, if you don't, if you're not there yet, we, we can't start yet. And I really appreciated that because it just takes a minute and there's multiple roads to healing and you have to decide for yourself what really fits the best and the timing of that road to go down. My advice to any of you out there is to go and watch uh, the link below, which will have Dr. Britz's uh, TED talk, because if you don't think you can get better, you need to listen to her story because uh, she's a brilliant doctor and she's helping change the the, you, I get all choked up. You're, you're, there's people changing the forefront of what medicine used to be and actually healing people from these conditions. And um, I call them, uh, well, there, there are symptoms, you know, the symptoms that we're dealing with. What is the symptom that we're dealing with? And really getting to the root issue. And that's the beautiful thing about, so make sure you go on and you watch this because all things are possible. People can heal. Um, oh they can get better. You're a doctor for crying out loud. I always say, I'm like, you could have, I mean, if you thought of, if you didn't get that type of help at this point in your life, where would you be now? Oh my gosh. Um, I'd probably still be in an unhappy marriage and unable to work or leave my house. Couldn't grocery shop. Um, you know, really wasn't eating. My eating disorder was, you know, high at that point. Yeah. And honestly, that's kind of what it was. Like, I think I was trying to disappear because I just did not like what was happening and I couldn't tolerate it. And I know a lot of people know what that feels like. And, and I will add the, you know, I believe everyone's capable of healing. I really do. I and do yeah. we don't always, we aren't always able to hold that belief in ourselves, but like when we're ready to get there, it, cause it takes, it does, it takes bravery to try to get yourself. Well, it does. So, you know, but it's there, that courage is in there. Um, and it can be really worth it, you know, when it's, when it's the right time. Well, and I think that that's also like when we're talking about nutraceuticals for eating disorders or all of these other things, again, people don't realize that we're talking about an imbalance. And if we can balance the systems staying long-term, like I, I had an alcohol problem at the same time in my life. I've learned that through amino acid therapy, my chances and my statistics are greatly increased when I have a balanced brain and a balanced blood sugar and balanced all those things. And uh, it makes a huge difference in your life. So Dr. Britz, I, I've always been a fan of yours. You know, from the moment you started to get into this scene and we worked together and then I continue to just have such admiration for someone who is really changing the way we treat people. And um, you're doing amazing work. If you're interested in working with Dr. Brits, and um, we've got the link below that you'll be able to learn more. Thank you for joining this platform that will give people continued resources because we're all about trying to help people find help yeah. and um, find the right kind of help. Um, Dr. Britz is incredibly trained when it comes to these types of medications and mental health, which makes her an amazing fit for individuals who are suffering from mental health disorders. Although, like you said, you're a trained doctor in many other areas, but she's highly specialized when it comes to this. Thank you for taking the time today. Oh, and thanks so much, Debbie. Her. Appreciate it. I love Dr. Britz. I've always, you know, there's certain, I, I get so excited when I meet, when, when I meet another doctor, that's doing life-changing work. I always tell people who are suffering, don't give up, just mm -hmm. look for the right fit. Now, yes. if we're not the right fit, someone is gonna be the right fit to be able to help you. Yes. So, and I love Dr. Brooks. So <laughs> thank you for joining us today and we appreciate you. Thanks, Debbie, appreciate you too. Thank you for watching. Don't forget to subscribe to our channel. For information about Alternative to Med Center, give us a call at 888-984-9667.